Good morning. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Calcitex webinar on how IEEE 23.5 enables DER integration. I would like to thank you all for taking time from your schedule to attend this webinar. I am Nirmal Thai, working in product management and marketing for Calcitex. A few points to keep in mind before we start off. This DL is an only on demand webinar. I'll work to facilitate clearing of your doubts or queries uh, that may arise during the course. Please feel free to send us your questions on marketing at the rate calcitech.com or you can type in the questions in the window provided in the go to webinar. We will be sharing our response to you over email. Welcome once again. So here is the agenda or topics which will be covered in this session. First, we will explore the background of DR and why DR integration is important. Then we can look at the options for utilities to integrate uh, DR assets and what are the challenges on those. How a typical 30.5 helps in achieving this objective. What are the different solutions and features of the solutions which is built on top of a 30.5? provided by Calcitech. We can also look at a couple of case studies before winding up the sessions. To give you give background, so deployments of distributed energy resources, that's DER, such as solar plants, battery storage systems, electrical vehicles, wind farms, are progressing on record pace. DER can interlace with main grid gracefully which helps prosumers to sell excess power while drawing from the main grid as needed. These advances are intended to support a more sustainable decarbonized energy future. However, decentralizing the electricity grid introduces a whole lot of new instabilities in the grid. For example, if we go with conventional approach, the, whenever a local fault or a voltage spike uh, or any other disturbances happen in the grid, a property circuitry quickly shuts down all the energy sources to isolate the fault. However, this will lead to cascading system wide instabilities on a system with high intensity of DR. So, it's important for DR plants to automatically ride through these disturbances rather than simply shutting down. Or, if you look at the other case, Whenever a DR resources is connected or disconnected, uh, it will disturb the grid. Even though these disturbances are feasible, as the number of DR sources increases, the strain on the grid increases exponentially, which will cause devastating effects on the grid, which will ultimately end up in blackout. So what needs to be done by utilities? So DR is supposed to improve the reliability benchmarks without impacting the current resiliency and safety. DR would need to support utilities in maintaining the grid stability by providing grid services. Accurate forecasting and scheduling of variable distributed energy generation is assumed significant importance for loadless passenger senders of the utilities. So the operators uh, need to needs to establish a bidirectional communication link with each DR. However, coordinating with each individual DR becomes an enormous task for the system operators. At, this point, at the same time, uh, the time for onboarding a DR, cost of onboarding, and process of integrating the DR into, an oper into, an into operations and market must be kept low and simple uh, to make sure uh, more stakeholders are on board into the system. So, uh, so DER must enable uh, grid services, which are like uh, to regulate the voltages uh, throughout the uh, distribution network, and to coordinate the production logics around the network, uh, reverse the power flow, or you control the uh, power flow directions and avoid an unintentional islanding. 
increased equipment line duty, like improving the uh, system operations life cycles. Uh, sustain variable due to weather. So most of the uh, depends upon the renewable sources. Uh, so weather has got a huge impact on the generation uh, capacity. So uh, and then the capacity switching of the grid. All there are, these are a few of the grid services which should be exposed by the DDR. So let's look at the challenges. So usage of legacy SCADA protocols such as DMP3, IEC 104, Modbus, IEC 6950 is always an option for utilities to connect with these DR assets, the SCADA. However, there are a lot of drawbacks in this architecture. For example, DR assets are owned by third parties like prosumers, consumers, or retailers. So utilities cannot directly control these assets similar to other devices which they own and operate. Utilities start ask permission for the operation and there are contractual attributes which needs to be respected before taking any action. Legacy protocols are not designed for this kind of interactions like for example the, uh, the protocols which we list we see in area like DMP3, one so for Modbus, SNMP, etc. And SCADA system uh, is also does not fit for the high number of scalability uh, because of the last penetration of the uh, resources in the grid. And there's no standard data model. Uh, that's data model for coordination, control, settings of the resources are not standardized in the legacy telemetry protocols, which will again lead to enormous engineering effort for integration. So the uh, devices are uh, installed at customer premises with customers' internet or network, which may or may not have adequate bandwidth. So it is critical to use communication protocol, which can be adopted easily for this environment. DR devices are purchased uh, from retail markets, uh, which is supplied, and th these are devices are not supplied to the utilities. So the settings, uh, which is a bit maybe. Uh, stored inside the devices are totally uh, private, depending upon the manufacturers or the uh, geography at which these, these devices are being distributed. So to overcome these challenges, uh, there is an option called IC I3 2030.5. So I3 2030.5 is designed to address about this. So this standard is designed to connect or integrate consumer devices with the utility using widely adopted IP or HTTPS web technologies on client server architecture. But the client is a big field uh, which get connected to with the server at the utility premises or DR site display units. So I typically get point five can meet all the DR specific use cases like monitoring the status of the DR uh, when the DR is started and when it is disconnected. Uh, what are the energy metering uh, or, or conceptions or generation of these uh, uh, DR plans? How to hand, uh, we can also handle customer engagements and information by communicating pricing information to the customer or uh, uh, give the energy usage statuses to the customers or even give, send a test message to the customer as well. And uh, 30.5 can also uh, use for request actions like on demand um, or demand response um, uh, to a thermostat or demand response to a uh, smart plug, uh, which is connected to the load in the customer premises. They can also change the inverter settings or send controls to inverters or EV charge stations. And a DR can also give con uh, controls and settings, like for example, curves, volt power curves, frequency power curves, uh, can be returned to the devices on uh, on demand or can be on schedule with start time and durations. So there are a lot of new use cases which can be using the uh, 30.5 uh, for the DR application. And for DR, especially, it's designed uh, for multi hierarchy communication. Like uh, there could be uh, consumers and there could be aggregators in between, and there will be utilities and company. So, utility to DR 
segregated communication can be done on the 35 virus directly to uh, directly to the end devices communication like the smart inverters or recharging or air prosumers can also be directly controlled over 2035. And the communication profile is uh, support a range of backward technologies including wired and wireless internet, cellular or any other media supporting IP. So thereby it is firewall, firewall friendly which makes the integration easily easy deal with a few steps. On security standpoint, protocol ensures uh, security through TLS, uh, which is proven technology in web-based secure transactions. And it has also been easily adopted on any standard of the self-hardware uh, available on the market or can be deployed on uh, resource-constrained or battery-powered devices. As well. It also has the ability to uh, group devices and issue the um, settings or group commands to the uh, multiple devices in a single shot so that these groups can be uh, made flexible like it could be based upon elliptical network hierarchy or topology of network or it could be a customer uh, engagements like number of customers uh, for a specific region or a number of customers above a specific uh, segments or it could be based on the DR program. So these are flexible groups which you can create on top of this and you can give controls and settings to multiple uh, DRSS single shot. So IP 30.5 helps system operators to manage critical dist dist distributed energy resources uh, like solar, wind, EV and battery storage easily, unlike the conventional approach. Let's look at the, some of the functionalities which is provided by uh, ATP 2035. These are the common uh, resources and smart energy resources which is being provided. Um, for example, in common resources, there's a time function uh, which is used to, to synchronize the time uh, by locating and acquiring time from a uh, time source. It could be connected to from a time satellite or any other time source. It uh, common resource also to organize the inf device information like a static and press specific information about the devices, power status information regarding the device current power source, as well as basic status regarding any battery installed within the device. Network status like device network IP layer uh, details, potential link layer, uh, and performance uh, details are also being. Uh, capture and send across using network status functions. And there's log events which is uh, used for asynchronous uh, logging of the asynchronously generated um, warnings uh, or out of the box bonds conditions or uh, unusual events triggered by the devices are stored in the log events uh, functions. And there's a configuration uh, function which is used to read or write to the device operation configuration. This resource can be uh, queried to provide current device configurations perform configuration backup as well. And there's a file download and upload uh, function set which is primarily used for uh, secure or interoperable uh, remote software download to 20.5 devices. Uh, this function set may also be used for remote download download of any other file artifacts such as log files or configuration files or security currencies etc. So this is a few set of uh, common uh, resources which is available as part of 30.5 standard. Now let, let's look at the uh, smart energy resources which is provided by 30.5. The DRLC that is demand response and uh, load control uh, function set which is used by utility to Control any client devices uh, uh, loads on real time, or it could be on a uh, scheduled basis as well. And there's a metering function set, there's a pricing function set, by basically the tariff structures, uh, uh, which is actually communicated by the UPT to the HDR um, uh, uh, assets, can be sent across using the pricing function set. It supports multiple tariffs, including flat rate, pricing, TOU rate, uh, tires consumption blocks, hourly day head pricing, uh, real time pricing, or maybe a combination of any of these can be supported, the pricing functions. 
messaging is uh, we discussed in the earlier slides uh, you really can also send a bad test message to the uh, consumers or prosumers uh, to, inform, to inform them on view of the uh, demand response program so it could be any generation uh, curtailments so a lot of curtailments or generation uh, peak demands can also be sent across with the message function Billing uh, is provides the interfaces to provide uh, provide the conception or the cost uh, of the energy. Uh, it also provides the estimates of the future conception or the historical conception from service provider uh, to end device and provided by the billing system. And there's a probe uh, reservation uh, which is primarily used for uh, reserve the charge or discharge cycle especially useful for uh, the uh, plug-in electrical vehicles or the, uh, energy storage devices with, uh, or other managed lots that draw large amount of power. So that's the um, functions uh, set used for the four reservations. And uh, distributed energy resource function set, which is primarily manages all the distributed energy resources, the uh, assets like getting the status, from, status from information from the DR or availability uh, capability of the uh, do some the, some DR controls like setting the uh, DR curves to the devices, DR programs to the devices. All these uh, actions and the operations are done through the DR function set. And there is a metering mirror function set um, used for uh, constant devices to post metering data to a metering server in an efficient manner. This is a prepayment function set. Uh, defines the mechanism for a conditionally delivered delivery of the services based upon the outstanding credit debit. And all these models are, are aligned with uh, other standards like SunSpec, IEEE uh, 1547, uh, IEC 61815, and uh, we can also have a um, manifest specific proprietary extension for the function set as well, which gives us the flexibility to add more features and functionalities into the existing standard. Now let's look at the adoption of the standard. So IEEE 30.5 is the default protocol of uh, uh, IEEE 1547 47.1. Um, which is mandatory for all the smart inverter uh, inverters to the supply the market. And uh, California Route 21, that is uh, common smart inverter profile, uh, CSIP has been standardized uh, IEEE 30.5 and mandated from uh, 2020. And uh, it covers all the use cases like direct DR communication from the uh, DR access to that to the utilities or DR with embedded or separate as smart inverter control. Uh, it should also support the 30.5 standard or even um, there are generative facilities, uh, EMS, uh, which is managed multiple DR assets. Um, so uh, EMS should be able to uh, interface with UTT through 30.5. Uh, uh, it can also, or, also supports the aggregator mediated communication, like all the DRs is being connected with the aggregator servers, sitting in a cloud or on-premise servers. And from the aggregator, there could be a direct connectivity to the UTT servers on a direct uh, B2B uh, VPN connection. Uh, apart from California, uh, Hawaii uh, has also adopted the standards through Rule 14H. Uh, AMO Australia is also adopting the standard uh, in Australia. And a few enhancements to the California Rule 21 uh, using 30.5, uh, working on stand, uh, uh, using the standard for the vehicle to create a bidirectional charging and discharging of the vehicles uh, is controlled and managed by 30.5. And it's also used for storage system management. Like it could be a, a picture battery or it could be mobile EV battery charge uh, storage systems. It's been controlled and man managed using ITP 30.5. Okay, so now look at the utility to multi site DR integration uh, options available. So, uh, important you can see that there are multiple types of DR like utility vehicles, uh, community solar, EVs, or wind farms. Uh, combined uh, 
heat power uh, generation units, battery storage units, rooftop solar, demand response, micro There are multiple types of the uh, assets out there. Field, which needs to be integrated with system operators and the case, uh, which is having a rate of 30.5. There are primarily two ways of integration, either uh, directly from the uh, DR assets uh, to the system operators uh, through a gateway. Uh, or it can be also through an aggregate. There's a retailer uh, sitting in between and managing all these DR assets. All the data can go through the aggregator or retailer servers, and from the, there could be a 30.5 connection to the uh, UDT and system operator network. So these are the two types of uh, integration options for a DR, DR assets with the UDT. Now, look at the uh, solutions which is provided by Wikipedia. So for the gateway, uh, which supports uh, different protocols to communicate with uh, DRSS like on the NP3, WordPress, Sunspray, Snap, the Manso 1, Manso 3, etc. Um, this, this protocol called Calheo Edge, which uh, is used for these uh, applications. Uh, let's look at the how it is connected. So Calheo Edge uh, is a software which can be installed on top, on, on its gateways. And Edge Gateway can uh, directly connect with uh, different types of VERs uh, on protocols like DNP3, Sunspec, Modbus, or uh, System IPT, etc. And we can connect directly with energy meters uh, or the uh, inverters or serial or IP interfaces. We can also connect with the um, energy storage systems uh or the EV charging systems directly on uh, Rust or the uh, on Modbus or different other proprietary communication links. Now for the uh, DRLC of uh, uh, response and load control uh, can be done through a thread devices and which is used to connect with the gateway and the thread will in turn connect with the appliances or the consumers uh, um, and control these devices directly. And, and in cases if there's a multiple DRs is connected on the EMS system, so EMS system can, system can be directly connected to the gateway. And from the gateway, that I can give to the utilities on 10 to 30.5 um, uh, as an aggregator mode. And the data coming to the utility will be collected by the DR head end, which in turn will be giving to multiple applications like the SCADA or the ADMS applications. So, um, uh, could be a virtual power plan uh, application or could be a dance applications uh, provided by utilities. And this interface from the dance system to these applications, legacy uh, OT application can be on the legacy protocols like the NP3 or SIM, uh, also for the state based extra. And the gateways can be managed uh, from a remote manual server, which is Telekito Tiger, uh, which will also uh, provides the options to uh, access these remote devices or a secure uh, role-based access control uh, using PKA infrastructure. And there's a PKA infrastructure which is also used for managing the connections uh, to the utilities as well as managing connection with the remote management servers as well. So this is the how the gateway-based integration uh, works. On the aggregator based solutions, so uh, in aggregator based solutions, hmm. uh, all the DRSS are being connected with the aggregator, which can, aggregator software can sit on cloud or can be sit, sit on uh, aggregator on premise servers. And uh, from the aggregator servers, all the DRSS can be connected directly over the legacy protocols like the NP3, Motors, and Spec, etc. And uh, aggregator, uh, which is Calcito.io uh, service, can integrate with the utility system on a 30.5 over a wired internet or, or, or a VPN network. Let's look at the solution details here. So here you can see that uh, uh, there are three stakeholders, utilities, retailers, or DR consumer or prosumers, and uh, there could be multiple types of uh, multiple DR customers. Um, my customers have multiple sites, which is connected to the uh, DR data hub, which is a DR aggregator or PKU, uh, through the customer's VPN. And uh, this customer VPN will be isolated through a virtual gateway appliance. And the virtual gateway appliance will uh, communicate with the DR assets uh, on 
different protocols like PNP3, Sunspot Modbus, PNP3.5, SNAP3 Modbus, uh, or any customer operating protocol. Through the customer dedicated VPN, uh, or could be a custom internet with the DLS 1.3 uh, tunnel with the uh, aggregator server. Like that, there could be multiple customers services connected with the uh, VR aggregator through uh, its own virtual gateway appliances, which isolates the public communication, uh, communication through a public internet with the VR access. And from the VR aggregator, uh, data can go to multiple system operators. So the, uh, the energy supply can be provided by a single uh, utility or could be multiple utilities. So depending upon the um, use cases, uh, LKU aggregator can uh, give data to single uh, DR head and or multiple DR head and uh, from the different sites. So it's a selective uh, mapping option where you can select which all sites can should go to which all operators. Uh, and so it's a multi-tenant architecture, which uh, is also manages the multiple accounts and, and data is being isolated from each accounts separately. And there are two deployment options for the year aggregator. It could be on ho hosted service, or it could be a software which can be installed on the retailer's network or retail server as well. And then there will be, from the retail network, uh, there will be a B2B VPN link from the aggregator server to the utility um, uh, data center. Uh, no DR head end, mm. which will send data over 23.5 standard. So these are the uh, four different products, uh, which is followed by Calcitech. The DR gateway uh, software, that's Calcitech.io 2300, which is a software-based solution, which is, can be installed on any standard uh, hardware. Uh, DR gateway hardware, which is uh, SYNC 2310, which is also called as the Morsite gateway, um, which has been approved by uh, you know, a few utilities and is used for integrating the DR access with the utility servers. Now, the aggregator, there are two options. Uh, there's a DR aggregator software. This is software which can be installed on the retailer infrastructure. And there is an option for the aggregated host services, the multi tenant service, which can be subscribed uh, on demand basis. Uh, so, depending upon the number of DRSS which has been hosted, there will be a subscription model available for the host service uh, where you can connect the DRSS, and from the uh, DR aggregator, you can, uh, can link directly with the utilities uh, DR header. Look at the uh, details of the gateway models. So these are the hardware model that is uh, SYNC 2310 hardware, uh, which uh, comes with the uh, Intel Atom processor with two Ethernet uh, to connect with the um, field and, and their devices. And there are two serial ports, uh, which comes with 232 or 45 uh, ports, which can also directly connect with the DR assets in the field. The few uh, USB interfaces and the device is uh, fully uh, uh, hardened, uh, complex with the hardened Linux uh, with the TPM 2.0 secure boot and inbuilt firewall, which uh, enables uh, to uh, with the high security uh, devices for the uh, exposing data from a DR site. And as uh, NEMA for uh, Enclosure polycarbonate, uh, which, which can be motor on a bar, and uh, it can be managed in the seventy days Celsius uh, on record uh, environment. And it also have been built a modem, this is 4G modem. Uh, for the US, uh, there's a uh, modem is combined to FastNet uh, to connect with the utilities uh, private uh, list line network. Yes. On the software, the KIO2300, which is a software, which is primarily uh, available on DBN or uh, RPM or Docker packages, can be installed on standard uh, hardware like S86 or S64 with one GP and 500 MB uh, storage. It, it's also available on uh, specific platforms on ARM or uh, PowerPC, starting from 32 MB uh, RAM and uh, 14 MB flash. 
it's available on request so there are a few hardware which is also validated with these configurations uh, like uh, adlink ao vendec vad raspberry pi um, phoenix iei and few um, odms uh, hardware also validated with the kau e2300 software about the connectivity interface with the field or to the uh, southbound as well as northbound these are the utility connectivity interfaces like it, you can also connect on uh, system 950 dnp3 60710 uh, 10 104 uh, dlms for some connecting with the meter metering head and systems iccp to connect with the uh, that is inter controls and the protocol to connect with the scala systems or um, ems systems 6.4.0025 to connect with the wind farm uh, plans, 23.5 for the other DRSs. For the DR connectivity, uh, as per IEEE 1547, uh, DR should uh, meet any of these protocols that 23.5 is the default, and or it could also have transpect modules or DNP3. So all these interfaces are supported in, in, in the edge or the aggregator software. And it could also connect on Modbus, or uh, standard Modbus, or Cisman 815 and S7, BACnet, or 104, which is all these protocols are supported in the edge or the aggregator as well. And from the uh, gateway or the aggregator, you can also give data to the other IoT platforms uh, like uh, uh, Amazon, AWS, or Microsoft Azure. There are a few services which has been uh, provided by uh, IO to connect with IoT, AWS IoT Core, AWS IoT Sidewise, uh, AWS Kinesis as well. And uh, to, to Azure, you uh, can also integrate with the Azure IoT Hub uh, and create a uh, device tuning uh, service uh, in the IoT Hub. And for the other industrial uh, IoT uh, platforms, uh, can be as, uh, data can be exposed on OPC UA standard or MQTT web software. MQP or lightweight M2 protocols. And we also support to uh, NMS or time signature protocols as well for the network management and time management options. So these are the interfaces for the southbound and northbound from the aggregator and the uh, gateway product line. And 2030.5 is been certified by SunSpec as per the CSIP version 2.1. And uh, all the aggregators and the uh, gateway products are, are being uh, certified um, for the CSIP file, which is mandatory in the uh, SunSpec uh, CSIP government. So on the security side, we have the uh, multi-stakeholder trust chain support. Uh, multi-stakeholder trust chain is used for uh, securing the device and securing the communications for multiple use cases. For example, uh, there's a three types of PKI infrastructure which is supported. Uh, PKI one is trust chain one, which is provided by the manufacturer of ASE or Telgitech, um, which is used for signing the uh, firmware and configuration files or patches, security patches for, for the devices. So only the uh, firmware which is signed by the uh, manufacturer can be downloaded into the devices, uh, which ensures that no other malware or any other party softwares get, get installed and be installed on the uh, hardened devices. And there's a uh, option for uh, TC2, so trusting two, which is used primarily used for uh, device management and the remote access. So um, this is a private PK infrastructure which is managed and maintained by the uh, OEM or can be managed by the utilities as directly. Uh, you can, uh, utilities can create uh, uh, users and roads and give permissions for different set of use, uh, devices to different set of user groups with a different set of permissions. Uh, and all this permission management is been done through X509 certificates. Uh, uh, fine grained uh, roles, permission, roles and permission can be managed using uh, OCSP, uh, that is online certificate status protocols, all through an attribute certificate, which is based upon 6235351 8 uh, RBSC standard. 
and it also supports the uh, uh, chain 3 which is PKI for the uh, end user communication which uh, for, for in, in this case uh, 2030.5 uh, connection from the aggregator or the gateway to the utility base can be uh, secured through the uh, TC3 and certificate can be provided by the uh, PKI infrastructure which is managed by the system operator or could be managed by the party. Like for example, SunSpec uh, uh, PKI infrastructure is managed by that party and we can get these certificates and use the certificate to connect with the utility directly as well. So these are the three types of uh, uh, PKI infrastructure which is supported by the uh, uh, gateway or the uh, aggregator. Let's look at this example of the PKI infrastructure for the California Route 21. That California Route 21, as I mentioned in the earlier slide, is being managed by Route 21 CA, uh, it's a third party entity, which is provides certificates for each uh, uh, 2030.5 aggregator or to the gateway. And uh, this certificate is, is used to establish a secured connection, TLS connection from the aggregator or gateway to the utility server. And um, they also use uh, 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 utilities on private uh, PKI to connect with the DRSS with the aggregate as well. So this is an option uh, which can be enabled or, uh, on request to establish the secured connection on the downstream. So let's look at the few case studies uh, which uh, the solution is used. Uh, this is uh, a uh, project in US uh, which is used for integration of DR sites with the capacity of 3 megawatt or higher uh, with the utility as per rules, uh, California Route 21 mandate. So the, uh, the hardware product, I think 2310 is used uh, with the calculated software in it. And um, uh, it's used to connect with the DRSS like meters or inverters or EMS systems on different protocols like Sunspec mode bus, uh, standard mode bus system, FTO, or the NPP. And from uh, data collected from these devices, it's been sent to the utilities their head end uh, through 2030.5 uh, protocol. And uh, the, gateways, uh, the gateways, as well as the remote devices, can be uh, managed and assessed through the Calcu uh, device management or remote access service, which is also based, uh, it's also posted on the uh, cloud. So this is uh, uh, one of the case study which is uh, uh, which is deployed with the uh, their gateway hardware. Another case study is in uh, New Zealand where we Calcu its uh, software KU E two three zero zero is is been used on it. Third party hardware, third party edge device, where the uh, requirement is to uh, optimize the uh, distribution network. I use it in the word capex spending to address the penetration of EV and solar, combined with demand response uh, to lower control the uh, consumer loads. So, the, this is the use case, and uh, uh, KO2300H has been used to connect with the inverters uh, on the SunSpec motors. EV charging station on uh, uh, standard motors or rest APIs, uh, depending upon the EV chargers, um, which is being connected. And the customer loads is being connected through a thread devices, which is combined to a standard Australia standard AS47553.1. And uh, this has been controlled from this data has been consolidated, aggregated at the gateway, and this has been sent to the uh, DERM systems, which is hosted on the Azure platform on 2030.5. And the gateway management and remote access has been done through the Calculate.io uh, remote man device management and remote access tool. Here in this uh, solution, uh, the load control is been managed through the standard called, uh, that is the demand response program is managed, managed through the program called uh, AS47553.1, uh, which is a standard in, uh, defined for Australia and New Zealand market. And the appliances are combined to Australia. This standard uh, will support primarily three uh, commands like DRM1, DRM2, and DRM3. DRM1 uh, can completely shut down the device from the load. Uh, DRM2 can uh, switch the load to a 50 percentage of the capacity uh, uh, of this particular equipment. 
DRM3 command can switch load to a 75 percentage capacity, and there's a command called DRM4 which uh, switch load to a 100 percentage capacity as well. So the four types of commands are supported by the uh, any of the equipment is combined to the standard, and these uh, devices can be directly integrated with the gateway uh, through their uh, red standard and from the red sorry from the gateway you can control. Uh, from the dense applications or from the utility scale applications. So these are the two use uh, case studies, and we can wind up to making uh, the uh, benefits for the stakeholders. For utilities, uh, this uh, 1030.5 solution is used to uh, improve the grid stability without impacting the penetration of the renewables. It's also used for managing non-essential loads for curtailment during the peak demand also is for regulating the EV charging stations during the peak demand period. For the DR owners or prosumers, the, the solution is used to increase the ROI by improving the generation yield uh, for a DR generator stations. It is also used to increase asset life by proactive maintenance and reduce the operating and maintenance cost and also combine to regulations like works under California Rule 21 and other standards which is coming in the regional uh, market. For the retailer or the gator, uh, the seamless integration with the system operators, uh, DERMs or ADMs applications ensure using the standard or using the solution. Uh, also, uh, Retail will also have increased retail, retail customer base. Where more and more customers can directly connect with the uh, their systems on a proprietary or any standard protocols, um, regardless of these protocols. And the utility interface will all, always be standard using the 2030.5. And also increases the uh, enabled market penetration for the retailer segments. And for OEMs or the inverter manufacturers, uh, is are using the solution for improving the equipment uh, life by monitoring and of operational and performance data and take necessary actions on time. Um, and also uh, secure role-based remote access solution provided by Calcia.io is used to avoid uh, the site visit and travel. Uh, for any 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 use cases like yeah, updates updation of the firmware, updation of the software, configurations, or doing some troubleshootings, um, all these remote device access can be done uh, remotely as if uh, user is doing it locally uh, on the uh, device the devices on the field. So with this, I would like to conclude my session. Uh, so a few references uh, which I have used and if there is any questions uh, you have uh, please uh, feel free to send us to marketing at calcutech.com or you can type in your questions on the what webinar questions uh, box we will get back to you as soon as possible so thank you all thank you all for your time and to attend this webinar